If you have your Bibles today, Ezekiel 47, beginning at verse 1, reading through verse 5. I want to talk to us for a while today. I'll try to keep it as brief as I can. I want to talk to us on the topic, don't get stuck in the kiddie pool. Don't get stuck in the kiddie pool. Ezekiel 47 verses 1 through 5. And the King James text today reads, Afterward he brought me again unto the door of the house. And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the other gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Again he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. The waters were to the knees. Again he measured a thousand and brought me through. The waters were to the loins. Afterward he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over, for the waters were risen Waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. Don't get stuck in the kiddie pool. Would you bow your heads with me? King Jesus, Master, Savior, Redeemer, and the best friend I've ever had. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. Oh God, how much more wonderful my life has been since I reconciled who I am with who you are. Since I came to a place of understanding the grace of God and how it applies to me. Oh, Master, today the Word of God is the most important part of any church service. I've been in your service a long time. I've been preaching this great book for many, many decades. Even before I came out, even before my life changed and my ministry changed, I've been in this thing a long time, Lord, and I've never, never, never forgotten how great a weight of responsibility there is in preaching the good news of the gospel. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost rest upon me. Touch my feeble lips of clay. Allow me, O oh God, to deliver this word to the people of God. For there is no benefit, there is no blessing, there is no encouragement, there is no faith. Unless and until the word of God is preached in truth, preached in love preached with divine authority and the touch of the Holy Ghost. Grant at this hour we pray, for I ask it in none other than Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Praise God and amen. We read in our primary text today of a vision experienced by the Old Testament prophet Ezekiel. And in this vision there was a body of water. And we read in this vision how that as you went further and further out in the water, the water grew deeper and deeper. It started out at the ankles. 
It eventually came up to the knees, and then it came up to the loins, and then finally it was the water that you would have to swim in or you would sink and drown. And it was ultimately a water so deep and so strong and current that it was impassable. Many people today have an aversion to water. Some are fearful of it. And they'll refuse to even go into the water when they're near a river or a lake or an ocean. But there are benefits to swimming which cannot be realized in a kiddie pool. In a kiddie pool, you might be able to splash around a little. You might be able to cool down a touch. You might be able to have a little bit of fun. But you cannot improve your health and your physical fitness in a kiddie pool, can you? No, sir, you cannot. I have an uncle who lived to be into his 80s. And my uncle for years and years and years used to go to the local YMCA every day, every day. And he didn't work out in the gym. He didn't go to the weights, you know. But what he would do is he'd go to the pool and he would swim so many laps, you know. And Uncle Eddie would swim that 20 laps or whatever it was every single day and it helped to keep him fit helped to keep him in good shape helped to keep him healthy but had Uncle Eddie simply gone to a kiddie pool and sat down in six inches of water he could not have experienced the benefits of I telling the truth today. Oh, I want to tell you, children, too many people in the church today are very satisfied staying in the ankle-deep water. Oh, I don't mind going to a church as long as the preacher don't get too deep. I don't mind going to a church where I can splash around a little and I can say that I've satisfied my religious requirement. I've gone to a place with a cross on the wall where they talk about God and they mention Jesus. A lot of affirming churches today, my friend, for those of you who have not experienced them, I will tell you, many of them are nothing more than social clubs with a cross on the wall. Many of them, I know this from people who follow our ministry online. I know this from people who have become part. We have many, many what we refer to as extended members. These are people who do not live locally, but they they consider our church their church. And they follow our ministry online. Some of them even tithe and support the church. That's how much they feel a part of this church. Many of them are non-LGBT. I've had LGBT people send me messages and tell me, I used to go to this church locally. I used to go to this church when I lived in this community. It was supposed to be affirming of LGBT people, but all they ever talked about every single Sunday was being gay and how you can be a Christian in, in spite of being gay. And, you know, and they said it was the same, literally the same topic every single week, year after year. Others told me that they attended churches. I visited one one time myself. While I was living in New York City, I visited an affirming church. And the pastor got up, and I'll never forget this as long as I live. The pastor got up in the pulpit, it was a woman, and she said, I'm going to be preaching today from a passage that uh, comes from a book I've been reading. She didn't even break open her Bible. 
she literally preached from a what amounted to a self-help book okay and that was the text she used for her sermon and there were dozens and dozens and dozens of LGBT people sitting in those pews listening to this woman with this sermon topic one man he's part of the community the rainbow community one man who has known me for now nearly 30 years he's been supportive of this ministry for at least 25 years he loves me we're friends i love him we've known each other he has supported me everywhere i've ever gone every work i've ever tried to do this man has supported and in recent years he himself has become an extended member of our church for a long time he had a church he attended and he supported our church even though he didn't attend our church but in recent years he even has become an extended member of our church and we've named him an honorary member of our church because of his long-standing support of this ministry and he told me some years back now, he said, you preach Jesus. You preach the word of God. You actually preach a message from the scriptures. And you're not careless in your handling of that great divine document. You are careful and you are studious. And when you preach your messages, he told me this. He said, your messages are so meaty and so juicy. There is so much to them. He said that a lot of times I have to listen to it two or three times before I can really, you know, knock all the juice out of the fat, you know. Before I can really benefit fully, I have to listen to it two or three times. I'm going to tell you a little secret about this preacher. I have no interest in the kiddie pool. I'm not even remotely interested in the kiddie pool. I'm not here to entertain God's people. I'm not here to play games with people. I'm not here today to simply, you know, listen, if I were trying to build something to glorify myself, then I would do whatever I had to do to fill up these seats. I've got somebody I know in my family who is in ministry and we were recently talking and he was telling me, now mind you, he's mainstream, you know, and he's got a good group of people coming and his church is growing and everything's going good. But do you know what I heard him saying to me? Do you know what I heard him telling me? He literally told me about how he was compromising his doctrine and compromising his message and compromising his worship in order to accommodate this group. He didn't want to say anything that might challenge. He didn't want to say anything that might offend. He didn't want to say anything that might stir the water a little and cause somebody to possibly leave. No, he's more interested in the number than he is the quality. Honey, I got news for you. I come from old time Pentecostal Holy Ghost baptized stock. The most important thing that comes out of any church isn't what comes out of the choir loft. It isn't what comes out of the organ. It isn't what comes out of the piano. It isn't what comes out of all the special singers who make up the congregation. No, no. It's what comes off the sacred desk. That's the most important part of any church. The message. I started my affirming ministry back in 93. About a year later, a mainstream Pentecostal pastor 
whom I had confided everything in, told him everything about Jason and I, told him everything. He knew everything. I was trying to do a work. He came and visited. He heard us preach. I used to write articles for the local newspaper. And uh, they had uh, preachers on rotation, you know. And every uh, so many weeks, my rotation would come around. And I told the newspaper, I said, if any pastor ever cancels on you, let me know. And I'll shoot you an article real quick to fill in for, you know, maybe a preacher who's missed his rotation. Well, they wound up calling on me a number of times. So any number of articles that I wrote appeared in the local newspaper and this pastor came to me and he said brother you have got one of the most powerful anointings that I have ever seen on a man of God he said brother there is no reason under the sun that your ministry should be hindered in any way from being able to do what any minister ought to be able to do. He said, and unfortunately, there are many places that you may go where you won't be able to do things like perform a wedding, for instance, unless you're ordained somehow, unless you have that certificate on your wall saying you have been ordained. He said, I want to ordain you. I want my ministry to ordain you. He said, I don't want you to pay any uh, 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 I forget what they call it, not dues, but you know, I don't want you to pay anything, I don't want you to do that. He said, I just want to be able to make certain that your ministry is ordained and you're able to perform weddings and do anything you need to do. He said, because honey, your ministry is too good not to be able to. If you think Pastor Charles just tuned his own horn, I've got that ordination service on on uh, audio on YouTube and I'll be happy to send you the link so you can listen to the service yourself. He did it on the same Sunday. Uh, he and some of his church folks came to help celebrate my birthday that year and they decided that they would do the ordination during the same service. We don't have video of it, but I have audio and I made a video with the audio that I shared on YouTube. So if you're interested, I can share that with you. Say, Pastor, what are you trying to say? You're just tooting your own horn. No, I'm not. Please, 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 please. Don't let the devil tell you that that's what I'm trying to do. I'm standing here in Huntsville, Alabama today in an empty building. There's not a soul here but Tommy and I. We've come to this city after I spent 20 years of ministry and struggle in Dallas, Texas. Tommy lost his job after over 20 years with the same firm. He finally, 15 months later, found a job in Huntsville, Alabama. We never dreamed in a million years we would live in Alabama, period. And we're still trying to recover our, ourselves. <laughs> Honestly, we really are because there's, there's a real shock for us to have to move and relocate to Alabama. He finally got a job after 15 months in Huntsville. We had to relocate. It cost us $50,000 to move ourselves and all of our property and all of our possessions and the church stuff and everything else. He's our primary earner. I've worked in affirming ministry for decades and never got a paycheck ever. I'm not in this for money. Couldn't care less about money. That's not my motivation. God called me to preach when I was eight. And if I don't do what God's called me to do, I really feel sometimes like if I were to quit doing what God's called me to do, I would drop dead. Not because God would punish me, but because I'd have no reason to breathe. My whole purpose in life is to do what God has called me to do. He gave me a burden 30 years ago for our community. He gave me a burden to start a church 
that would demonstrate to the mainstream church world what a church ought to look like. And I've been doing this now for 30 years, and it has been a struggle every step of the way. It has never gotten easier. Not one single day has it gotten easier. So many LGBT people have been hurt, they've been bruised, they've been wounded by the church. They don't want to know nothing about the church. They don't want to know nothing about organized religion. They, they don't realize what they're losing out on. They don't realize the church is part of God's plan, folks. You can try to spin it any way you want to try to spin it, you can stand there and lie to yourself and tell you, I can be a Christian. I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. You can fit to yourself all you want to. God designed that we gather together as believers, that we come together as believers. God established that we have pastors. God has given some apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, 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 and teachers. God has done that. For what? For the perfecting of the saints. For the edifying of the body. God designed the church. This thing is not a man-made invention. Now there are many men who have misused it and abused it. Yes. But God designed it, and it's here for your benefit and for your betterment. It is here to help you make heaven. It is here to help you grow. It is here to help you realize the power of God in your life. It is here to help you experience miracles. It is here to help you find the presence of God when you're in trouble and struggling. You cannot, you cannot live a victorious Christian life without the church. And the reason for that is simple. God designed it that way. Okay, Pastor, so why are you telling us all this stuff about your ministry and all that? Well, I'm telling you all that because I want you to understand something. There's a lot of churches in our community that are happy to go into the water up to their ankles. There are a few churches in our community that will even venture as deep as the knees. Some of them might get real brave and come up to the loins. Honey, <laughs> I'm here to help you learn how to swim. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't get stuck in the kiddie pool. We are able to move about and do things in deep water we cannot do without the weightless effects of a deep pool of water. Tommy and I have been blessed over the years we've been able to go on a few cruises on two of the cruises that we've taken we were able in different locations once in Cozumel, Mexico and another time in Roatan, Honduras we were able to swim with the dolphins I was always terrified of water I, ne I never liked to be in water that was over my head. It always made me very uncomfortable. I asked the man at the dolphinarium, you know, where they allow you to swim in dolphins. I asked the man, I said, listen, how deep is this pool? And he said, well, you know, the dolphins have to be able to go kind of deep. He said, so these pools go about 30 or 40 feet deep, something to that effect. And I said, really? Because normally, under normal circumstances, I will not, if I, go, if I would go in the pool, I wouldn't go into the area where the water was over my head. I always stayed in water that was at least, you know, under my chest or something. 
I said, really? Then I asked him, I got a portly belly, I got a big belly, I said, can this life jacket you put on us, can this flotation device, can this thing really keep me up at the top of the water? Or am I going to get in there and sink to the bottom like a brick? <laughs> he said, no, it'll hold you up. I said, are you sure? Look at me. Look at me good. I got a Buddha belly. Look at me good. You sure this thing's going to hold me up? He said, yep, it'll hold you up. So we got in the water, and when you first get in, you're kind of on a ledge. And the water's only up, you know, maybe to your belly in that area. And so I let myself down, and I picked my legs up, and I wanted to see if I genuinely would float, you know, or if I was going to wind up sinking. And lo and behold, I floated. When it came time to push off and to go out into the middle of that 30 foot or 40 foot deep pool so we could interact with the dolphins I pushed off and I went out into the deep because I always had a lifelong dream of swimming with dolphins that was like a lifelong thing something I've always wanted to do and I wouldn't to let nothing keep me from doing it. I don't care how nervous I was, how anxious I was. I was going to do it. But you know what, Tommy? I could never have done that if all I could do was swim in the kiddie pool. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? I could never have done that if I hadn't overcome my fear of deep water. I'm going to tell you, a lot of people in our community... They hear this old preacher preach, and he sounds too much like the pastor I grew up with. He sounds too much like my grandma's pastor. He preaches passionately. Sometimes he sounds like he's angry. Sure, I'm angry. I'm angry at churches that are hurting people. I'm angry at pastors that are abusing people. I'm angry at doctrine that doesn't come from the Word of God, but is man-made and deceptive. There's a lot of stuff I'm angry about. And when I preach, Yes, sometimes I shout a little. Sometimes I get passionate. Sometimes I spit and sputter. Honey, so do they. But you know what's funny? The people, a lot of times on their side of the fence, who won't listen to a Joel Olstein, will listen to me. See, sometimes if you're going to be heard by people who spit and sputter, you got to spit and sputter yourself. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? Got news for you folks. I've gotten telephone calls from pastors of major Pentecostal denominations that are as homophobic as you please. And I have had pastors call me on the phone and tell me, that they had been listening to our preaching online and they could not argue with the word we said. They liked what they heard and they supported us 100%. Am I telling the truth? Mm -hmm. There's a method to my madness. There's a reason why God anoints me the way He does. There's a reason why I preach the way I do. And there are too many people in our community who are afraid of deep water. And they, well, I don't want to go into a church where the preacher preaches like that. No, honey, listen, you, you need to be here. You need to support us. You need to help us. Because the preacher who preaches like that is the very one that is being followed today, listen to me, by some of the biggest names in television and evangelism in the world today say pastor charles you're trying to tell me that your little pope dunk ministry is being followed by major evangelists and preachers uh-huh how do you know i know i know i don't know from rumor i know for a fact some of these preachers have even made comments in recent years where they're trying to become more uh, 
supportive of LGBT people and LGBT believers and some of them have made comments and boy it is backfired on them because people got mad as murder at them for saying things that were even remotely positive concerning LGBT believers but guess what the preacher who made that comment and got all that flack has been following this ministry on YouTube for years I keep trying to tell people, do you have any idea the opportunity that we have? Do you have any idea the effect we can have on the church universal? If we can get people together to support this work and make something happen in Huntsville, Alabama, that will blow the minds of the Rod Parsleys and the Jimmy Swaggers and the Franklin Grahams. But the enemy fights us. He knows. Oh, no, 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 no. If you establish a church in Dallas, Texas, if you establish a church in New York City, if you establish a church now in Huntsville, Alabama, full of people who are on fire for God who shout the victory who celebrate their faith who rejoice in the Holy Ghost who worship in spirit and in truth and who genuinely are invested in the deep things of God. They're not satisfied with the kiddie pool. They want more. Hallelujah. Oh, Holy Ghost, cover me till I can only swim. Hallelujah. Oh, put me in a place, Lord, where I gotta swim. Hallelujah. I don't want merely to wade in the water. I want to swim. Hallelujah. In John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39, in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers, 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 not a fountain, not a stream, rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Oh honey, I got news for you. The Holy Ghost wants to flow like a river through this place. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God wants to flow like a river. And He wants His people to frolic and rejoice and celebrate. In the midst of the river, glory to God. Oh my Lord, listen, Acts 20 verses 26 to 31. I have no idea why our mic keeps popping out, folks. It doesn't normally do this. This is a new problem we've been experiencing, and I will get it fixed. Acts 20, 26 to 31. Wherefore I take you to record this day, the Apostle Paul said, that I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to, the, to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, Paul said, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. 
Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Folks, if you live here in the Huntsville, Alabama area, you don't know me. I've been in Dallas. I was in Dallas for over 20 years. I spent about seven years or better in New York City trying to do a work for the Lord. I've been preaching now this message for many, many years, three decades roughly. I'm going to tell you something. When I stand before God in the judgment, I'm going to look the Lord in the eye and I'm going to be able to say, Lord, I'm pure from the blood of all men. For I did not shun to declare the whole counsel of God. This ministry, we're not trying to set up a kiddie pool. We're trying to set up an Olympic-sized <laughs> diving pool. Hallelujah. You watch these diving competitions on, in the Olympics. They can't dive in a pool that's only four feet deep. Am I telling the truth? You can't dive from 30 feet in the air into a pool that's only four foot deep. Honey, we're not trying to set up a church in Huntsville that's a kiddie pool. We're not trying to set up a church in Huntsville that's four feet deep. Glory to God. We are trying to establish a church in Huntsville that is full of the Holy Ghost and power, Amen. experiencing miracle signs and wonders. Glory to God. Amen. I have seen people in our community since I've been in affirming ministry. Listen to me. I'm not kidding you. I have seen people healed, not helped, healed of HIV. This pastor went into a woman, a young woman, 20... I think she was 26 or now 28. Now I forget as I'm getting older, I'm getting forgetful. Dying. She was literally on her deathbed with AIDS. And this old affirming preacher, listen to me, left a church service that I had conducted at the Gay Lesbian Community Services Center on 13th Street in Manhattan, New York City. That's where we did our services back then. I left our service there, went to the hospital, saw this girl. The doctor said she'd be dead in a matter of hours, anointed her with oil and prayed for her, went home, and the next morning she woke up and her color had returned, her strength had returned, and she said to her mother, Mama, I'm hungry. And they began to bring her food. They said they brought her McDonald's, they brought her fruit, they brought her hospital food, they brought her pizza. They said she was eating everything that they could put in front of her. The doctor literally said, I haven't got a clue in the universe what has happened to her. We did not know what infection was killing her. So we had no idea how to treat her. He said, I don't know what's happened, but whatever it is, if she continues to improve in this way, she can go home Friday. Honey, she went home Friday. Hallelujah. She sent me a postcard about a month later, said, I'm living back with my family in Texas. She said, I'm going to school. I've got a part-time job. The doctors cannot find the virus in my body. Don't you see what God wants to do? Can't you see what God wants to do? But he can't do this in a kiddie pool. He can't do this in water up to your knees. He can't do this in water up to your girdle. He's got to get you into the deep water. Hallelujah. He's got to get you to that place where the power of God and the Spirit of God and the presence of God are able to flow like a mighty, mighty river. Glory to the Lamb of God. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. Again, Paul writes, And I, brethren, 
could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? We got too many churches. Folks, this isn't an affirming problem. This is true of the church world everywhere today. The majority of mainstream churches preach a message that is as watered down and as diluted as they can possibly make it because they are more interested in the number. The preacher is more interested in his paycheck. They are more interested in building a kingdom unto themselves than they are doing the work of the kingdom of God. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? Well, guess what, sweetie? This church is interested in doing the work of the kingdom. And if that means I've got to continue to worship alone and preach alone to whoever online is willing to listen, then bless God, that's what we're going to do. Because I refuse to blow up a kiddie pool. just to satisfy immature believers who have no interest in the deep things of God but will be satisfied with just, you know, oh, I'm going to go to church so I can satisfy my religious itch. Not here, you know. Hebrews 5, 12 through 14, for when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, Ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of, a, of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Come on, folks. Come on out to Forward Christian Life Center. Pull up to the table. We got some steaks ready. Hallelujah. We got some potatoes baked. Glory to God. We got some ribs on the fire. We got something here you can sink your teeth into. Glory to God. We got something here that'll help you to grow in Christ. That's why we're called Forward. It's about moving forward. It's about getting past old conceptions and old ideas and old beliefs which are incorrect and inaccurate and moving forward and maturing and growing. Hallelujah. Yes. Coming to that place of perfection. The term perfection in the King James literally meaning maturity or completion. John chapter 16, almost done today. John chapter 16, 12 through 15. The Lord Jesus Christ was addressing his disciples and he said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto 
you. There were things the Lord couldn't even say to the disciples that we have available to us today. Why? Because we got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Comforter is come. Glory to God. And with the Comforter comes revelation. With the Comforter comes teaching and understanding that the disciples had to wait for. We don't have to wait. There's no reason to play in the kiddie pool. We're not waiting for God to give us the means whereby to have a more complete understanding and a more clear understanding and a full revelation. We don't have to wait for nothing. We've got everything we need. It's right here now. All we got to do is get out into the water. Hallelujah. And not be afraid to get into the deep. Lastly, this afternoon, 1 John 2, 25-27. And this is the promise that He hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them, listen, John the Apostle wrote, concerning them that seduce you. Remember Paul said after our departure there will be some who will come and he talked about those who would have teachings and doctrines and beliefs that were polluted and perverted and twisted and wrong and they would be more interested in building kingdoms unto themselves than they were building the kingdom of God. Now Paul said, oh, excuse me, John said, I write unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. We have the anointing today. Glory to God. In the Old Testament, they couldn't help but walk through water that was only ankle high. That's all they had available to them. They couldn't help but walk through water that come up to the knee because that's all that they had available to them. They couldn't help but maybe venture into water that came up as high as their chest, their loins. Because that's as deep as was available to them. But today we have the anointing. Glory to God. We have the presence and the power of God in the church. And it flows like a mighty impassable river. And God beckons us, come on children, come on out here and swim a while. Come on out here, fill yourself up with, res with uh, revelation, fill yourself up with knowledge. Let me tell you something, a lot of people look at our church, especially in the non-LGBT community. A lot of people look at a church like ours, and they have the thought in mind, all those people, for those people to try to have a church that welcomes LGBT people. They must really play with the Word of God. They must really order down the Word of God. They must really compromise what God's Word says. Hallelujah, glory to God. No, honey, quite the opposite is true. <laughs> No, we don't play in the kiddie pool. You know how you wind up in a church like this? Let me tell you how. You got to go deeper. Hallelujah. You got to get deeper. You got to get out into the river. This church ain't about watering things down. No, this thing is about getting deeper. It's about digging a little deeper in the well. It's about going a little deeper in the Word of God. It's about looking into things that for too many centuries, preachers and Christians have failed to look into. 
practice, once you do a little research, once you dig a little deeper, you're going to find out that a lot of your teaching is wrong. A lot of your understanding is wrong. A lot of your viewpoints are wrong. A lot of your doctrines are wrong. Not all of them. But a lot of them. Especially as they relate to LGBT people. No, you don't you don't achieve a church like this by going into shallower water. <laughs> no, 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 no. Now ask some of our extended members. Amy, tell them you've been with us for over a decade. Patricia, tell them, you've known me now for how many years? You tell them. Is this church about splashing around in the kiddie pool? Or are we about getting out into the river and learning to swim? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Don't get stuck in the kiddie pool. Praise the name of the Lord. I know the